Yesterday, a story broke that just infuriated me. It's not something that made big headlines anywhere or was trending, but I think it's something that really needs to be talked about. People on the right have been particularly fond of making claims of censorship or bullying lately, and 90% of the time, it is totally legitimate. The right, libertarians, nationalists, classical liberals, all of us, yes, we have dealt with censorship. Yes, we get bullied. Yes, we get pushed around, punched, banned from campuses, and beat up. But I think we are reaching a crucial point right now where we need to be careful to not exaggerate our victimhood or get comfortable with it. A lot of political activists, including myself, recognize that being censored and attacked by the left can be excellent for optics and is a great way to expose how awful and anti-free speech the progressive left really is. It quite frankly creates a story, one that luckily in a lot of cases people really care about. Free speech isn't something that should be taken lightly. But with how prevalent censorship is and how politically easy it is to take advantage of this narrative and blow up a story or for your website or make a name for yourself, we have to really make sure the censorship stories are credible if we want this free speech movement to last. And yesterday, a story broke that blew up just how easy it is to take advantage of this narrative. Joshua Nash, a student at Purdue University, was summoned to an administrative meeting after making online comments about being a dangerous faggot like Milo Yiannopoulos. He also claimed that he was potentially being expelled for his retweets on a Twitter account. A rather odd claim given that he made it on the day of receiving the letter, an account on which he retweeted tons of tweets from Milo Yiannopoulos and Blair White, which some say he did to mask its short existence. He then reached out to all the online political activists he could, such as Milo, Blair White, and Mike Cernovich, to blow up his story. Of course, in classic victim behavior, he claimed he was getting death threats and that it was the university that was enabling him to receive those death threats as well. It turned out there was never any mention of expulsion and that Nash had exaggerated the entire incident and that the university actually has a profound respect for free speech and difference of opinion. Yet Nash's narrative worked. Of course it worked, we ate it all up. I mean, with all the censorship going on, why wouldn't more happen? What's crazy about this story is that we don't have to make up censorship stories on the right. We deal with it so much already. People on the right shouldn't want to play the victim. We shouldn't want to be the victim at all. The goal here is to not be the victim. The goal here is to celebrate not being censored. And when your university has a green light for free speech support and had no intention of expelling you in the first place, this is fabricated drama that only hurts the free speech movement. The silver lining on this story is that, unlike the progressive left, it was actually our free speech movement itself that actively rooted out the liar. I want the difference between us to always be highlighted by us condemning liars rather than defending them to the bitter end like the liberal establishment with people like Emma Sulkowitz. You even saw someone who was a center part of the story call it out, Blair White, who tweeted her disappointments in the man's actions. The unfortunate reality is that the right typically are legitimate victims in a lot of political exchanges lately, but it should not be something we like or enjoy or want to see more of. Quite frankly, I'm getting so tired of it. It's why I bring security to protests now. It's why I brought friends who had concealed carry permits to Milwaukee with me. The goal here is to not be the victim. In fact, there is little that is more satisfying than swift self-defense from the right because it is so rare to see lately. Like this video of a Trump supporter pepper spraying a girl who tried to punch him. On average though, we just get trampled on and trampled on and trampled on and make Twitter campaigns to try to stop it. But the reality is the martyr complex of the right is not helping us in our battles against the progressive left at all. Milo Yiannopoulos likely isn't coming back to Twitter. The elections of media will likely remain rigged. Twitter and Facebook will likely continue to censor us. And I'm likely going to keep getting pushed around at protests. And it sucks. We don't need to exaggerate victimhood like Nash did or strive for more. There's enough shitty things happening to the right already. Instead, let's just keep telling the truth and highlight when conservatives are victim of the radical extremism of mainstream media, politicians, and public progressives but also toughen up. Let's not let them bully us. Let's try to make more positive news on the right instead of victim news on the right. And this is something I need to fix in myself as well. I am very guilty of having too much victim news about me. 
because quite frankly, I get censored a lot and pushed around at protests a lot. But I'm hoping that next time the story will end in quick self-defense for my security. Let's not let them bully us when they take our posters down on campuses, print out one that is 50 times the size and go climb to the top of the library and hang it. Look at some of the crazy things Generation Identity do to fight back, and they're literally being put into concussions at their rallies. When progressives hold a rally promoting censorship, show up with 50 people holding signs promoting free speech. When they punch us, punch back. And most importantly, the right needs to make sure we never get into a position where we are comfortable being the victim. We need to get fed up because exaggerated victimhood is a dirty progressive tactic that in the end will fail every time. Thanks for watching. Don't miss my show Standoff by clicking here to become a member.